Hello, Finnish Football Show. I'm Mark Wiltshire, back for another bonus episode of the Finnish Football Show, uh, joined by Mark Hayton. Hi, Mark. Hello. And by Keke Muluri. Hi, Keke. Hello. And Rich couldn't join us for the start. He may dip in later or he may be joining our group of uh, rabid listeners. Uh, those that are watching on the video can see that I'm sitting in my sauna. The house is full and I've been banished to the smallest room in the house. And if you, uh, if you take a look at our, our Facebook group, um, I will put a picture there of me setting up for this recording today so take you right behind the right behind the scenes yeah keke rolled up when we first started the uh, started the video um we i uh, decided to get together and talk about the the recent few games that the hookia have played um there were uh, there was a friendly away to poland uh, followed by a couple of home games in the nations league firstly at home to bulgaria and then at home to ireland um, and one of our boys was in the stadium for one of these games as well. So we'll get a ringside, a ringside view. Um, but I guess, Mark, we, had, we should we take them in chronological order and start with the friendly, which is Poland 5, Finland 1. Mm. What is yeah, there to I, say? Well, I mean, so before I think before we get to that, we should just hope that the Finnish authorities never get to see this video, because if, they, uh, if you get into any kind of citizenship test, and they say that you're in the sauna with with a t-shirt on. <laughs> well, so well, I can only imagine it'd be like socks and you know three three pairs of pants. They're never going to let you in. They're never going to give you the paperwork. Let's leave it to the imagination that I've only I've got only a t-shirt on. <laughs> no, don't don't alter. Come on, come back, come back. Yeah, Poland. <laughs> yeah, please, yeah. let's talk about yeah, something yeah. better. Let's talk about Poland five, Finland one. Oh. Well, it was, it was, it was tough. It was a tough, it was a tough night. It was, um, I mean, I think the the, before the game, I think we all knew because the two games afterwards were going to count for like towards, you know, for, for the group in the, in the nation's league and they'd count more towards, you know, setting the, um, setting the FIFA rankings and all the rest of it, that, that you're not going to put your first team out in this sort of rearranged friendly. Um, so we did put out, um, a pretty weakened, well, not a weakened, but but the B team, for want of a better term, predominantly. And Poland put out their B team, the rest of Lewandowski and a couple of others. And um, we got hammered. We found out what we knew, I think, before the game, which is that they are a better, te better team than us, that have a big, better, better depth in their squad. And um, at home, they, uh, they, they, uh, they put us to town. I think one interesting thing from the game is that they made the, the tactics that we had, that three at the back, three in midfield and the, full, and the, and the wing backs, that got really, that, that caused us a lot more problems against a proper team than I think, um, than I think we would have done if we'd have been like a, like a flat back floor four or held it like a low block. So there wasn't a lot of good that came out of it, I have to say. Yeah, uh, Paul, it, um, Paul, Paul Leo at the back and... Um, and even Daniel O'Shaughnessy, after playing so well the other week, you know they they struggled a bit with Poland, didn't they? So, like you say, Mark, obviously they they are they are a better side, but um, but yeah, we had it, it was it was really a, a, a second string lineup that we had out, but um, with one eye on the, the competitive fixtures, obviously. But yeah, it was still a shame to go down so so meekly. But there you go. Well, I think, I mean, the, one of the things that they missed, so the, the back three, they had, a, they had a torrid time because the, I mean, the, the, the forward line of Poland was, was pretty strong. But I think also there was a quite, there was a, a fairly large distance. They kept dropping off, right? So they had, um, they had uh, one of the lads up top muscling in and, and causing a hell of a, a lot of havoc. But um, the, the, that, that second ball, the, our midfield didn't get back quick enough. I think it was, what was it, Lamb? Uh, Shula, yeah, Shula, Lamb, and Kauko, I think, yeah. and they weren't quick enough to come back and pick up. And you can't expect the the other two defenders to like come back into the centre because they've got a you know they have to they've got a broader line to keep, to take care of in a sense. So uh, it, it was just when they when they dropped off into the hole, 
nobody, they, the defence couldn't step up to take care of it and the midfield didn't drop back quick enough to, to block it and stifle it. So I think it was, um, yeah, it was difficult. It was difficult. All, all, all things, all, all, every way around, every way you looked at it, it was difficult. I have to give kudos also to Grzycki, uh the the Polish forward, plays for West Brom, who, who got a hat trick, and it was a cracking hat trick as well. Uh, everything he hit was just, mm. just flew, just flew into the bottom corner. I also <laughs> thought bad for Jesse Oranen because he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't make any mistakes. I thought he covered his angles pretty well. Um, but everything that that kid hit, it just it nestled. In, it, first of all, he hit it like a rocket. Second of all, it just landed in the, into the bottom corner. So he was having, he was having one of the nights of his of his life, and we couldn't seem to get started. And Milik, that Milik is some player as well. You know, he he ended up he ended up with a goal as well. But he's he's link play and um, and you know holding it up up top and all that. He's he's some player as well. He's surprisingly strong. You know what I mean? Like it, it, I, I, I never. I, I think it's probably because he's been in a team next to Lewandowski, who's who's pretty huge. But he, he's he, he looks like he caused Weizenen all sorts of all sorts of problems. Like he was, he really he didn't spend too much time messing about with Oyala because I think Oyala could muscle him around a bit. But as soon as he got one on one with with uh, Weizenen, he, he was throwing it around. But I mean, he, he plays for Napoli. You know what I mean? He's you know, he, he's like um, <laughs> now he's Champions League level. You know, he's a proper proper player. But it wasn't all bad. It wasn't all bad. Ilmar Niskanen then chipped in with his um, his first international goal. Lovely goal as well. Yeah, yes. it was lovely, wasn't it? A corner of the box and from the right hand side, cutting in and sort of driving, curling the ball into the uh, into the far side of the goal. I mean, it must be a difficult one because you know to score your first international goal, you probably want to go crazy, don't you? But he's he's um, it wasn't really a celebration at all. He just sort of. You know, shrugged his shoulders and, and made his way back to. He did. Uh, he did manage a little smile, but um, mm. but that was about it. But it was a cracking goal, and hopefully we'll see a few more from uh, Ilmar. It's hard. It's very very hard to uh, to celebrate when you're four out. I think we were we were four 0 down by by that time. And I think actually what happened before. So one of the I suppose if you want to take the positive from it, Glenn Kamara came on about five minutes before. And he started to pick the ball up. So we'd switched to, I think, like a four at the back for the sec- by when we were 3-0 down, so for the second half. And um, as soon as Glenn Kamara came on, we started to transition the ball through the Polish midfield and started to lay it off and do play nice one-twos and sort of connect the play a lot. So Niskanen got his, got his chance partly because we were able to... Kamara was able to come on and influence and impact the game. So that was, I suppose, another, another positive. But um, it's difficult. It is difficult. It, and it was a hell of a finish. Like... Stood it up, curled it around the corner, top po- like up here, postage yeah. stamp. So I thought it was, um, yeah, I thought it was this game did well, and and sort of camera. And maybe that's enough said about a five-one defeat. Other than we had a similar result over there about four years ago when the when it was the full strength teams playing, and that that was a that was a real hiding, and I I was started. I well, started the day going into this Poland game thinking, right, let's see how we've developed. But like you said, Mark, the teams were, neither team were at their full strength, so it's difficult to really judge any any progress from there. Just put it down to a, a bad day at the office. Yeah, I think I think that Poland will take like take everything from it, obviously, as you would. They will be really, really happy. But by the same token, I don't think, and it has been proven in the fixtures we're going to talk about next, I don't think that we really need needed to panic too much, you know. Like um, that was it. It was just a bad day. Everything they touched turned to gold, and you, you're not going to get that every week, are you? Or every every time you play. So even even though I mean, I was even though the lineup was experimental, I was quite hopeful. Do you know what I mean? But yeah, it was just one of those days. Everything they touched went went in, didn't it? So um, but yeah, as I say, I don't think we needed to to panic too much and that was that was proved later in the week yeah yeah it was so a few days a few days later back on back on home turf with stronger first choice team playing um Finland beat Bulgaria 2-0 at the Olympic Olympia Stadion and one thing you mentioned Mark about was about the the three man or the three centre backs in the in the Poland game and uh that changed for the, the following two games. Yeah, Arayuri and Toivio came back and they both looked 
pretty sharp. Um, Ara Yuri, uh, he's playing again in Cyprus, so he's, he's he's doing well. They can basically the two of them can. I think I think looking back at it, I think the reason we're at three at the back is because we don't have two, there's not two of those three centre backs, Oyala, O'Shaughnessy, and Vizelin that can act as a two. I think O'Shaughnessy's still learning a little bit of the game. He's, he's relatively young. Vizelin similarly. I think Oyala could could be in one of those things, one of those sort of central bursts, but he's not um, he's not particularly mobile. Uh, so I think one of the reasons we might be having three at the back or might have been experiment with three at the back is without Toivio or Arayuri, we don't have two strong enough defenders like on their own to play in that space. But I think, yeah, as soon as Toivio and, and Arayuri came back, they looked, you know, steady. Like we looked, we looked really solid. And it, it was those two plus Sparv and Kamara in front of them, and I think the last time in for the last internationals, Spav, I think he'd either he'd, he'd only just come back from injury and he didn't look he looked half a yard maybe uh off the pace, he looked sharp again, so he was he was you know his positional sense was very good, his passing was back on, you know what I mean, he was, his, his tackles were good, so we went back to the 4 4 2 back with the the experienced guys, and I think it showed in the in the way we played. And Uronin had a, had a really great game against Bulgaria as well. The way he links up with Taylor down the left is is incredibly pr- promising because they had no they had no idea how to deal with those two. They were both they they outstripped the two Bulgarians on the on the right hand flank the, the pair of them. So they moved the ball well um, off each other and um, on they had it on the overlap. They had it cutting inside. They had it down the channel. Every every which way we were we were attacking down the left. We were we were winning. So yeah, I think and another Robert, Robert, Robert Taylor's really. Starting to, I don't know, bloom maybe is the right is the right word. I remember two years yeah. two years ago, I think, uh, Puro Soeri was the was looking exciting uh, with you know Duominen and Gardiolan, and they were there was a lot of running going on, causing causing mm. problems for the the opposition defenses, and I think that was a key part of the of the kind of um, uh, well the improvement we've seen over the last couple of years from the the national team. Um, but now also, Taylor was doing that. Some of the runs and, and the way he was sort of jinking through defenders, yeah. it was really, really exciting and uh, and looked good. And now you've got Niskanen doing it a little bit on the other side. OK, he's only a few games into his national mm-hmm. team career, but, you know, he's doing it over there as well. And it's uh, it's scary. It's not easy for, for people to deal with. I think you're right. I think both of those guys, they, they believe in themselves. They believe in their own skill. You know, Robert Taylor is a skillful player. He's um he's got a couple of tricks up his sleeve. He's he's mm. not scared to drop the shoulder and and take the defender on. And I yeah. think you know he's bit, with with a bit of confidence. And he's he's one of those players. You know if it doesn't if it doesn't work out, he's not scared to try it again. If the defender yeah. gets the better of him gets the better of him once, he's not scared to to drop his shoulder the other way and have another go. You know. So and I think you know like like anything in life, if you if you if you keep if you keep going. Eventually, you're going to get through, aren't you? So it's it's good to see those those players running at defenders on both flanks and um, and using a bit of skill to get past players. Yeah, both he and Niskanen are quick. They are they are rapid rapid boys. Like they they are quick with like on their own running into the channels, but also with the ball at their feet. So I think I mean it's it's it, you're right. He's got the tenacity and he doesn't give up. But he's quick and he's quick with the ball, which is which is something that it's really rare. You know, like it's I mean. We haven't had two or three players, but we've got now in our squad two or three players that can run with the ball, like at pace. And I, we haven't had that probably for the last 20 years, 30 years, probably not since Jonas Kolka. Have we had like two or three players where, where we could actually attack with pace? Well, I don't know what you, I don't know, you know, why you're so surprised. Obviously, Robert Taylor's come out of Yee Yee Call Your Vascular, so he's, um, <laughs> he's learned it, he's learned it all there, hasn't he? Obviously, obviously, <laughs> it's in the water. <laughs> Um, and and like uh, Temupuki didn't didn't score uh, in in any of these games, uh, but he he seemed to have a whether deliberately or not he was he seemed to be the the sort of <laughs> the number ten around which everything else sort of pivoted. He he didn't quite have his shooting boots on for the uh, for the two Nations League games, but he was he was involved and effective and and sort of well worth his place even even though well he, he literally had somebody else's boots on so he, he, oh. had, he, had, he, had, an, he had he had an infected toe a swollen toe 
So he was wearing a size too big, like a size too big um, for himself. And so I think he has looked, he's looked not 100% in the last couple of games. And I think the basic reason for that is he's playing slightly injured. Not, not you know, injury and injury, but um, he's not he's not 100% fit. So I think he focused a lot more on, on his link-up play. Yeah. I think both against Bulgaria and against Ireland, he had chances that ordinarily he'd just lump into the back of the net. And I think, benefit of the doubt, I think probably the boots and his, his swollen toe probably, uh, probably played a part in that. Has anyone owned up to owning the boot that that missed those chances? Then <laughs> I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody would. And actually, <laughs> nobody I mean, wants to claim that. <laughs> well, although technically it's not. It wasn't. It didn't. At least the, the biggest one didn't end up being a missed chance because it became an assist. The one that he shanked against yeah. Bobby bobbled across the six-yard box and Taylor poked it in. So oh. I, he did. You know, pinpoint accuracy to pick Taylor out in a crowded box. Let's put it down to that. <laughs> exactly. They all count. They, they all do. <laughs> they do. But it's um yeah you're absolutely right though Mark despite not hitting the target you know himself he he still a lot of the play went through him he was picking out his teammates and to be honest with you I think he 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 can he gets pass marks for both games and um, yep. am I right in saying that's the first time we've beaten Bulgaria? First time yeah first time in history we beat Bulgaria I think we had eight attempts up until then so another there you first go. and there we had we hadn't beaten Ireland before September. So you know, it's another it's another first that you, you chalk yeah. up on the list. Well, that Bul- no. the, the Bulgaria attack though were dangerous, weren't they? Um, like they they carved through and made quite a lot of chances, and we were living living on living on the edge a little bit. I don't know. I think Bulgaria reminded me of, of sort of Hans Backer style Finland. Like they had they did they made some good positions. They got in, they worked the ball quite well, but they didn't really. I can't remember a time when, when um, it, Hradeski didn't make like any any world beaten saves against Bulgaria. Like there was never a time when he was like properly tested. And they did they did get into good positions, but I always sort of had the faith that, that as long as we kept our heads, we'd be able to keep him, you know, at arm's length. What about um, what about Poyan Palo over the uh, over the two games? Tough. Tough, tough role. Um, I mean, yeah. what was the role, Mark? Explain it just for those that are listening. So he's he's part of that. When, when you've got the four four two, then you've got a. They, the, he has this sort of. It's kind of like a cagey press. Like they don't press like everybody up because we don't have the pace at the back, but we still have to press from the front to try and make sure that the like uh, the opposing defenders can't just pelt the ball wherever they want. So we had to. Yes, he's got to spend almost all of his time with Puki sort of trying to close down uh, at the front and then make himself kind of available or then go in and try and win, win headers. And he, 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 was, he wasn't bad at, at sort of winning, holding up the play and winning the long balls. But he, it's a tough thing to, to go and win the long balls and then knock it on and then also continue to press all through the, 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 for, the for the whole, I think he was on for like 70, 60, 70 minutes. So, that's a, it's a it's a tough it's a thankless task in a sense and I mean aside from the goal Freddie Jensen was also pretty anonymous in the in the Ireland game and it's the same role it's this, he's doing the same job he's trying to close down defenders he's trying to cut off passing options he's trying to shape the way that they build the game and it's a bit of a yeah it's tough you can you can see from Boyan Palo's body language though he's he's desperate to score and he, he is. you know. He, he's he, you can see it just in the way he plays and in his body language, you know he's just he's just waiting for that chance. He's he's absolutely desperate to put the ball away. But um, but yeah, I, again, he's he's worked he's, he's worked his socks off across the two pieces and um, yeah, he's uh, hopefully hopefully he'll um, he'll come up with a goal or two soon. He will. I mean, he didn't. He, he was never really in. A, he was never really in a good enough position to have it. Like he was. He, he, he was always sort of drifting off the back post. Or he had, I think, one header from a corner when he was when he was falling back, and then he knocked the ball down for Pookie to shank his shot to Taylor when we scored. So that I mean, you know, he's doing his job as a sort of target man there, uh, pretty well. But we didn't. You know, he just we didn't have the chances. And I think, I don't know, like. It, He'll get he'll get his chance. When it, whenever he gets a chance in and around the box, he usually sticks it away. And he didn't miss any. Like he's not like we when I was sitting, yeah. sitting, here, sitting here thinking that he's like many howlers. So he he had to do the work. We didn't get the rub of the green this time. It'll come around next time, I think. 
And if anyone wants to sort of read uh, a report of the of the match, Mark was again very busy <laughs> in the last five or six days, um, turning out three match uh, reports and a couple of preview articles. And I've linked to all those in the in the show notes for today. And the uh, the match report for the uh, <laughs> we went from the Poland game. The report was poleaxed, and then for the Bulgaria game, it was a routine win, which is, as you said, Mark, not something that we've said often for the, about the Finnish national team over the years. And mm. and then for the, the Ireland game, we'll talk about that, but the match report was called Luck and Luke. Mm. So yeah. take take us into the Ireland game. What where where was the luck and what on earth did Lucas Radetzky do? Well, first <laughs> first of all, Mark, first of all, Mark, let's yeah. hear about your experience of getting into the Olympic Stadium. Uh, well, I have to say thanks. I can't remember the name of the van, but it was a it was a, a psychedelic chicken burger van on the walk up that did five euro chicken burgers, and those boys were, were bang on. That was a lovely, that was a lovely chicken burger. Because there was a actually, and I don't know, so I don't know, like I don't want to get into the commercial side of it, but Hesburger had a thirty minute queue for food. Hesburger, yeah. like to get to get to get a burger, it was like thirty minutes. I was like, come on, but anyway. <laughs> That's and that's good. that's Finnish fast Doddy. food. Yeah, yeah, that's it's yeah, it's, it's yeah, exactly. It's fast food. It's like the Finnish have gone to McDonald's, and, and it, yeah, you had to order on the computer. And I was like, "There's just burgers there. Give us a burger." Anyway. Uh, um, but but um, but the walk up. So I mean, it was eight thousand fans. So it wasn't it wasn't jam packed. Although we were spread out and physically distanced, so so uh, it looked you know the stadium itself looked pretty pretty good, and the fans were in fine voice. So there, there, there was a constant singing. Boy or Scary were were out in numbers and they were they were you know hollering for the whole the whole game which was which was great. Um, uh, the the renovation looks weird for four hundred million because they've replaced the you know do you remember the wooden bench seats? Yeah. They've put like a plasticky type of bench format that looks basically exactly the same except it's sort of plastic. So it looks the same. It's still freezing cold and the roof goes all the way around except for one section connecting to the old stand and the top where it looks like they've just sort of stopped it. I don't know if it's like a cool design floor or if it's like a <laughs> they just ran out of lumber. I don't I don't know. But it was brilliant to be back in the stands. It was really it was really great atmosphere and uh, it was freezing. It was freezing freezing cold. But it was hey. hey we've been joined by Rich. Um we've got about nine minutes left on this recording, Rich. I'm not quite sure why we're time limited. I've done something wrong. I guess. Um, so you're muted at the moment, but it's good timing to come in and give us your thoughts on the Ireland game. Wow. Uh, obviously, without stepping on too many toes, I think um, I, I was surprised. I think Ireland played a lot better than they did in the first game. Yeah. Um, it was um, definitely a more controlled performance from them, but Finland, I think decisive it says a lot when a goalkeeper's voted man of the match although uh, his save at the end of the game was absolutely fantastic I think a couple of people were asking me what's the finish for Gordon Banks hmm. uh, at which point I said it was uh, Lucas Hodetsky but um, <laughs> yeah. I, I was surprised I think after um, you know Bulgaria was a lot of toil and you can see the class difference between the two teams but um, it was it's nice to see a gritty performance I mean yes they're at home they've got fans there but it was nice that they ground out a win against, let's be honest, a team that are looking potentially like, um, I think they're in the top 20 in the UEFA rankings, whereas Finland, I think, are 31, 32. Um, yeah, no, it was, it was great. And um, yeah, just another win, uh, backs to the wall. But um, I mean, the, the goal was a bit of, it's gone around the world. Even Roy Keane's had his opinions on it. Um, he's not shy about criticising Ireland. But um, yeah, I mean, it was well, it was well read from from Taylor Pukki, who, from all accounts, I mean, I I call bits of the game, played very well, other than finishing. He, yeah. uh, he pressed down the pressed down the goal kick, uh, slightly fortuitous assist from I think it was O'Shea, the debutant uh, defender who headed the ball straight to Jensen from about five yards out. So um, yeah, it was fantastic. And is that where the luck comes into it, Mark? From your from your headline. Yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, the, the, the ball came across and I think there was, Jensen took an original shot and, and Randolph saved it and it bobbled and then the, the defender sort of 
nodded it back towards towards Jensen for another crack, and he just smashed it in. Um, and and that, and I mean, Randolph's original clearance was it was shambolic. It's the kind of mistake you don't tend to get um, at, at international level. So there's a bit of luck in in getting the um, in getting the getting the getting the chance that we got to to finish it. But it was nice to see that when we got got the chance, we took it. And then at the other end, yeah, Luka Radetzky was just in phenomenal form. So he had that amazing save towards the end, but he also tipped one over the bar, just uh, like at full stretch from, I think it was Edna, Edna Stevens. Um, and he had a couple. He had to come get a lot of crosses, and he had a, he had, he had a stop a, uh, one low shot from, uh, from Brady when he came up. So he was, yeah, Luka was in, was in good form. I managed to convince my dad to watch this game because obviously it was being shown in the UK, be in Ireland. And I told him before the game that, you know, watch out for Glenn Kamara. He's kind of the, the beating heart of this team. And we, we blew a bit of uh, sunshine up his proverbial in the previous uh, Finnish football show. Uh, mm. But I think that friend of the show, Tim Sparv, the Finnish captain, was, was perhaps outshone him in this game yeah. and was, was immense. The pair of them played really, really well. The both of them, both of them played. There's a little, there's a little YouTube clip going around of all Kamara's best moments. But you're absolutely right, Mark. Sparv was absolutely amazing. He was, he was hard in the tackle. He was, he was, his passing was great. He really is sort of, he really is back. You know, it was, it was a brilliant performance for him. He was, he, he was good. We've lost, we've lost, just lost Rich. Um, <laughs> he was there for he's just, 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 just oh, no, he's coming back. Uh, yeah, he was he was good. Uh, he, uh, yeah, Sparv was really good, and I think I mean Kamara was was really good as well. But what Ireland were trying to do in the middle of the pitch was press uh, both Sparv and Kamara back, and Kamara kept playing on the ball like he, he held like like he likes to do: pick the ball up, defended it, turned and moved it on. And I think as as the game wore on, what kind of I wanted more was Schuler to, to just come in and stand and pass sideways and move the ball around without trying to take on or take take too many risks. But Sparv was immense. Yeah, Kamara, I thought was I thought was good, and, and uh, I don't know. I, I thought it was a bit un, unlucky to get subbed. Yeah, I thought Soiri was was also very good in that game. A, a lot of the uh, uh, of that that sort of well, the the running and dribbling that we did, we were talking about just earlier in the in the show, and uh, and was was very effective and looked dangerous as well doing that. And the, the fact that Alvin Grunland was back as well, you know, it, it really does show the depth of players that are available to Canerva at the moment. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, because right, right, I didn't do anything wrong against Bulgaria. He played well against Bulgaria. He had a good game, but it was nice to see Grunland come come back in. And yeah, I think, yeah, go on. Oh no, sorry, I was just going to say, right, I mean, you made a point of the travel he had to do from Canada. Yeah before I think he basically didn't stop moving until he finished playing against Bulgaria and I was probably so exhausted that um, I mean that was the reason. Yeah he's pretty sore I'd imagine. You mentioned uh, Rasmus Schuler coming on for the last 15 minutes on Wednesday night and then he did much the same thing last night coming on for Hoyiko. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so sideways it, passing <laughs> yeah, well, yeah yeah exactly uh, it like came on with 15 minutes he had two 15 minutes or so in uh, in within 24 hours I, I guess it's hardly Mark Hughes was it there was a game in the 80s I think he played a half for Wales and half for Bayern Munich on the same day is that true um, yeah um, I think one I can't remember exactly how it worked out but he, yeah, he played about 45 minutes for each team on the same on the same day back before the FIFA calendar kicked in. Yeah. So uh, um, our next game is the, the other rearranged friendly against France. Uh, um, another sort of a, a step up, I would say, you know, like a, a team similar to Poland who are probably that, that one step above us. So it'll be interesting to see what, um, what lineup we go with there and system and see what we can get from that. Yeah, you'd hope it was a strong team and really, really make a make a go of it, wouldn't you? But then again, it's three games in in a week like, again, like this this time. So, um, yeah, interesting to see in about in about four weeks' time. And I dare say that we're we're getting into a rhythm now of of doing a show, previewing those a full show, and then doing a, one of these shorter ones just afterwards to look back at them. So uh, I reckon. Mm. Everyone listening, keep your keep your ears out for that. Subscribe wherever you're watching or listening to to get a notification when that's coming through, um, and also find our 
find us on social media. I, I, I did a little bit of a, a cheeky update to the Facebook group today, the Finnish Football Show fans, as it's now called, to find us on there. Join the other about 136 people on there that, that watch the stuff that we're um, that we're sharing. Yeah, Mark, you're right to look surprised. I was as well. <laughs> That's um, a good uh, captain in attendance there. <laughs> yes, it's true. <laughs> yeah. It is, yeah. Um, and, and so we've got a Facebook page where we post our content and then let's use that Facebook fans group to uh, Finnish football show fans group to uh, to chat and share other Finnish football news and, and stories and uh, find the, the website finnishfootballshow.com and before this recording ends I'll say goodbye to Keke. Bye bye, thank you. Bye to Mark. Hey Dom. And bye to Rich. It was short hey, hey. and sweet. Thanks for joining us. Story my life. Until next time on the Finnish Football Show, goodbye.